Hey everyone, this is Untold Force, and today in the VKB workshop, we're going to be covering response curves. It's one of the most uh, requested topics to cover, and I'm finally getting around to at least the very basics of it. So I'm going to be using my Gladiator Evo with Space Combat Grip, but really this can be used for anything, because response curves can apply to any axis input. Uh, so we have a few axes that uh, I'm going to be working with. The first are the X and Y axes on the base. So if we look at the stick, we've got your X axis, which is your left and right movement. Y is up and down. You've also uh, got your twist axis, which is rotating your grip. You've got the two axes on the mini stick right here, if you have the premium version of the Space Combat Grip. And we also have the uh, mini throttle right here. <clears throat> now response curves can be applied to any of these. Um, and I'm going to use Microsoft Flight Simulator as a way of demonstrating and showing what response curves are. This is not very common because uh, I find that um, the visualization in VKB Dev Config is usually pretty good, but um, Flight Simulator gives us a little bit more uh, perspective on it. So in this case, I'm just going to be using the left and right axis on my Gladiator Evo. So I'm going to move it to the right all the way, and then I'm going to move it back to center moving it all the way to the left. Notice how the center point is right here. That's uh, that's the neutral position um, for our x-axis. And again, if I move it all the way to the right, that is the maximum uh, deflection. And this is uh, the maximum deflection to the left. So what this is right here is this is a linear uh, linear relationship between the physical stick deflection and the output. I don't have any response curves applied in VKB dev config, and I don't have any response curves applied in Flight Simulator itself. But what I'll do is I'm going to change things around a little bit. I'm going to adjust the sensitivity plus and sensitive sensitivity minus in, v in, um, oh, okay. Yes, we, I get it. I'm going to save this as response test. And I do not want to apply this as default, but um, here, we're going to set this to negative five and, or sorry, negative 0.5 bias. And I'll set this to negative 0.5 bias as well. And there's even more options in VKB dev config, but this is very useful just for visualizing as I pointed out. So by using a negative 0.5 bias for the sensitivity in both the plus and minus directions, instead of it being a linear response, now we have a curve applied. So watch what happens whenever I move it to the right. If I move the stick just a little bit to the right, then that's very weird, but it is very handy. This is actually a bug that is extremely useful. So that was the original curve. That was a linear curve right there. Um, whenever I did this test earlier, I, this it, it showed me the input based on the curve location, but hey, um, this is even better because now we can see that there is a difference between where the linear relationship originally was and where the new response curve is. So that difference in value, let me put the mouse right here and I'm gonna move my stick to the right just to so it would be in line here. That difference in value, and I'll show you right here, I'm using my left hand so I'm not particularly Good at that but that difference between where the response curve is and where the original linear act or the linear response was shows you that you're applying that curve in essence you're getting more accuracy in the center of your stick as opposed to the outside so you're trading a little bit of sensitivity at the um, extreme of your stick for more accuracy near the middle this is what I think most people want, especially for atmospheric uh, flight, uh, whether you're you know, using Flight Simulator or another um, plane-based sim. And it's also useful for people who fly in Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen because you, if you're using your weapons, you'll be more accurate near the center. And that's where you're going to be spending probably 90% or more of your flight um, is going to be pretty close to the middle of your uh, your stick. Um, of course, you may need times where you really do need to go all the way to the uh, to the extreme and go all the way to the max deflection on the stick, and it still will have that, 
that output. As we notice, there's no change in the deflection there. However, we lose a bit of sensitivity near the outs outskirts in exchange for better sensitivity near the center. So I'm just going to go and show you again the difference here. I'm going to go all the way to the left now. It's pretty amazing to look at. <laughs> great, great little uh, demonstration. Now, one thing that VKB Dev Config does is it only shows one quadrant of this graph as opposed to what Microsoft Flight Simulator does, which is showing you all four quadrants. Um, that's because, generally speaking, this, this quadrant and this quadrant are pretty much not useful. <laughs> um, you, they're, they're not used. And this quadrant is almost always a mirror reflection of this quadrant. Um, you can change it here in Flight Simulator, so you can adjust it. Um, but I don't really find that to be too useful for most people. And I think VKB Dev Config does a great job of not showing extraneous information in this regard. So when we look at the curves, remember, we're just going to be looking at the upper right quadrant here in VKB Dev Config. So I'm going to open up VKB Dev Config. Now, if you haven't done it yet, make sure that your software is upgraded. Make sure your firmware matches your software version. Your version may be different than mine. Um, it may look very different, especially if you're looking at this years down the line, things may have changed. Um, but just make sure that it's up to date. Make sure that you've also gone through the auto configure and calibration setup uh, settings for your device, because an uncalibrated or unconfigured device is pretty useless. <laughs> and if you need help with that, just look at this channel or look at the VKB channel on YouTube. They show you how to do everything that you need to do. So here, um, again, we're looking at our Gladiator Evo. What we can do is we can go under the Profile tab here at the bottom. See those uh, different tabs. And in the middle, there's Axes. Now, uh, these are the, ta the middle tabs, which can be confusing to some people. So keep in mind that the bottom tab controls all the things in this section. And the middle tab here controls what we're looking at as like a subset of the bottom tab. I know it's not ideal, but you get used to it after a time. So here we're looking at axes, and then we're going to look at response curves. Now they are tied very closely to the physical axes, which is what we have listed by default. But I just want to get you uh, used to seeing what we're what we're looking at. We have eight different curves available on our stick. And you can apply the same curve to multiple axes, or you can apply different curves to different axes. By, uh, so if you don't specify any curve on your axis, it will typically go to the curve number that matches the physical axis. So that means that axis one will look at curve one, axis two will look at curve two, axis three, et cetera. But we can change this. All of this is entirely configurable. So let's go and start with axis one. So you might be uh, might want to look and see what is axis one. Well, under the logical axes, let's find out what this is. That is axis X. So again, we go to profile. We see under axes. And that is one that is the that is axis X. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the left and right main axis. So we're going to go back under physical axes and just double check that that is axis one. So we are looking and this this corresponds. So that's great. And we'll go to the response curve and let's click on the curve itself, the curve wizard. This brings up a new window this little window right here that says curve wizard and notice how it has the axis number axis one. There are a couple of ways that we can uh, look at things. First of all, you can see show values EQ will show you the actual um, uh, the numerical value associated with the curve. I don't really find that that's particularly valuable to me. I'm more of a graphical person. So I look at the uh, the relationship of the graph. So in this case, 
um, you can then look at the next button, which says linked. If you uncheck that, then that means that you can adjust each value by itself. Um, I, I'm sure that there are some people who would like to do this, but I find that that's not particularly valuable to me personally. I'm going to click the reset curve button to reset it back to its normal um, value. This is just a normal linear relationship. And I'm going to click the linked button because I prefer working on it with linked. And then you've got proportional, square, and cubic um, methods under the linked values. So proportional, if we adjust proportional, that allows us to go and it'll adjust all of the values proportionally to this to the point that you select. Um, that is great, but I like square even more than proportional. Square gives you a uh, the kind of relationship that uh, I was looking at at Flight Simulator not too long ago. That gives you a little bit more uh, of that gives you a better response curve. But my favorite, my personal favorite, is cubic because if I click cubic. I can adjust both the inside and the outside curves. So you can adjust this as you see fit by clicking and dragging these little red dots. And the amount that you drag them al allows you to set the proportions of the mathematical formula, the cubic formula that we're adjusting the curves by. So it's a very cool way of doing it. And this gives me just the just what I love. I, I love to have a nice flat response near the center. And then um, my, res again, this is my personal preference. So, um, and this is also for aero, you know, for typical aerodynamic um, uh, aircraft, not for space aircraft or spacecraft, sorry. Um, but I love to have a curve, some, something somewhat like this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click OK and notice how those values changed quite a bit. Um, on They were 128 across the entire response curve here for axis number one, and now they've changed by a lot. <laughs> and we can see that the curve is no longer, or it's no longer a um, linear relationship. It's now what we set it to be. Now, what we can do is we can go under physical axis and by default, it should pick up that curve. Um, notice how it does display that if we're going by curve number auto, because axis one will default to curve one. If we just want to be sure about that, we can select curve one. And if we want to apply the same, same thing to our Y axis, we can apply curve one to the Y axis as well. So I'm going to select uh, the uh, axis two. I'm going to apply curve one to it and notice how it changed it from the linear relationship to the, uh, to the curve. Now that I've done that, if you don't press the set button, nothing's going to happen. The set button sends all of the parameters into the device. So I'm going to click set. And now I should notice that my X and Y axes behave with the curve that I set. So I'm going to go into the test tab, click axes, and now I'll just make a, oh, oh that's perfect. Look at that nice response right near the center. Perfect. So good. And I still am maintaining all of the, um, or I'm, I'm still able to go all the way to the extreme and send extreme inputs if I go all the way to max stick deflection and same thing for the Y axis. So this is, this is really quite, uh, quite enjoyable, but, um, let's see if we've got some other things. So if you click curve, notice how it has help center at the bottom. This brings up a pretty decent web page that explains the things that we're looking at. But if you click it, here, we'll move this over here. Notice how this says curves, and then it has all the information is in Russian. So um, VKB, uh, the, many of the developers were from former Soviet countries, so this is their native language. If you would like to have access to these resources, you can right-click this here, 
and click translate to English in Google Chrome and it'll use Chrome's built-in translation engine and it's pretty decent. I find that this is um, this is a good summary of the things that I've gone over here. So, uh, and it gives you even more information about the different modes. So we can go over the linked proportional, which I showed you. Then you've got the square, the cubic curves. Also, it explains about how the, uh, the physical axis and the curve controllers work together. And it gives you even more in-depth information. Now, there is one other resource that I recommend you look at. And on the VKB website, there is a Enjoy 32 controller um, manual, which is several hundred pages, I believe. <laughs> and section 3.6 goes over the response curves and gives you even more information about what we're looking at and what we're talking about. So I hope this was a good summary. This is just the uh, really scratching the surface of what you can do with response curves because you can apply different curves based on different uh, modifiers and different th buttons that you might press. So someone might want to be able to have a extremely precise targeting um, setup. So you you can keep your the nose of your spacecraft pointed directly at, like, exactly at the target that you want and be able to snipe from kilometers away. Things like that. Um, you can do all that. Uh, it's just I'm my video is already long enough and I don't want to cover. I don't want it to become an hour long video because nobody's going to watch that. But I hope that you've enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or questions about this. And as always, if you want any help or resources, look at the uh, links in the description and especially click on the link to the VKB Discord. The people there are very helpful. They'll give you all the information you need. Um, and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you so much again. This is Untold Force and I'm signing out.